done for the day. Just got back off my route. It is 6.40 in the morning. What up gang, welcome to the channel. I'm back with another video. <sighs> Gotta get ready to uh, unhook and drop my trailer. After I get my post trip out the way. Uh, we had a pretty good two days. You know it's the beginning of the week yesterday went well today went well of course can't complain and now it's all over with so um let me go ahead and drop my trailer and i'll tap back in with you guys in a little bit keep it locked guys right here hiring TCW they got signs up saying $1,300 to $1,500 a week now hiring no I'm not thinking about it I think I said $1,300 to $1,500 but it actually says $1,300 plus a week average so if you're interested in TCW and you got a TCW in your area. They may pay more somewhere else. Y'all let me know, man. I know around here they do a lot of uh, container work, intermodal. That's pretty much what I see them. I rarely ever see them doing drive-in. Although they might. I think I passed by them before on the highway or something like that. Um in another state doing drive-in so you guys can check them out let me know if they made more or less where you are just drop it in the comments all right gang so before i get out of here i just want to talk about this real quick um i guess i want to talk about two different things so first off let me address this first one somebody asked me recently about a particular fuel hauling company they want to know what were some reasons that this particular company wouldn't hire them? And this person said they had one year of driving experience. Listen, there are a number of different reasons why a company wouldn't hire you. Let's just talk about some of the obvious reasons. Not being able to pass a drug test, bad driving record. In some cases, not being able to pass a road test the company going with somebody else that's more qualified. Again, like I've said in the past, it's still a very competitive market, guys. I mean, I don't know, it's like every other week, I see a different company that's done closed the doors, laid off drivers. You know, again, that just puts more drivers out there in the job market looking for work. So, still very competitive out here you know so it's no surprise if you don't get a job particularly if you don't have a lot of experience and you're up against a candidate who has more experience particularly more experience doing that particular job like fuel hauling for example um and the same goes for food service too but there are a lot of terminal managers when you're talking about fuel Oftentimes, they're looking for drivers who already have tanker experience or fuel hauling experience. Those are pretty much, you know, first option for them. And, you know, if they can't get some of those drivers, then maybe they would go down to a second option and, you know, hire somebody who don't have any tanker experience. But I think when it comes to a lot of these jobs, uh, food service, like I said, it's the same way. A lot of these uh, food service companies, it's not that they won't hire a driver with um, no experience in that particular uh, profession or in that particular position. It's not that they won't, but 
if they have the chance or the opportunity, more than likely they're going to go with somebody who already has experience doing that job. And, you know, that goes for a lot of jobs out there. So I'm not telling you this to be discouraged because, like I said, there's still a, a good chance that you could get hired on if you don't have any experience. Definitely in food service, for sure. We hire, depending on the company, new drivers all the time that don't have any experience. And um, the same thing with fuel hauling. There are a lot of fuel haulers out there that don't have any tanker experience that have been hired um, to haul fuel. So just depends on the company. But yeah, those are just a few reasons for the person that asked me that, just in case you watch this video. Um, timing could be another one, man. It's just when these jobs get put out there and you, and you run across them, definitely don't procrastinate when it comes to applying. Go ahead and submit that application. Those are just a few reasons, but there are obviously more reasons than that. You know, some companies want you to live within a certain uh, mile radius from the terminal. If you live outside of that, then, you know, they're probably not going to hire you. So it's just a lot of different things you can point to. A lot of different reasons as to why a company wouldn't hire you. But this is what I would tell you. Um, rejection is just redirection. So if a company decides to pass on you, don't look at it as a bad thing. Just look at it as, okay, let me go to the next thing, right? Don't put all your eggs in one basket. If you apply for one job, don't just be sitting back, waiting, 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 because you may be missing out on another opportunity at another job, right? I just was talking about timing. <laughs> so you can't just be wasting time waiting around with your hands crossed or fingers crossed thinking, you know, man, this job gonna call me. By that time, who knows? If you would apply for another job, you probably would have got a phone call by them. So keep your options open, man. The more applications you put in, the more jobs you uh, apply to, that's more chances for you to get a yes. So that's one thing I want to talk about today because I wanted to address that. And also the second thing, you know, would I recommend trucking? Would I still recommend trucking to somebody who is interested in getting into this industry? Absolutely. Um, I'm not sure if I shared this story with you guys or not. I probably did. I just can't remember. But, you know, I have a, a customer who I deliver to. And that was this guy that works there. He does all the little cleaning up around the restaurant. Um, I usually get there before they pull up. But when he gets there, the first thing he does is start going out by the dumpster and, you know, cleaning out all the little trash cans and spraying down the pavement, taking out trash, all that, you know, type of stuff. That's what he do um, around the restaurant. And so he asked me one day, he was like, man, are y'all hiring? We wasn't hiring at the time, but I told him companies like the one I work for, they hire a lot. So, you know, I talked to him about Cisco and U.S. Foods and some of the other, you know, food service companies. So I'm like, look, go ahead and get your CDL, man, and get into it. I told him you can make some money, man. You can make some good money doing what I do. I told him that the job isn't easy. It's a very physically demanding job. I mean, he see what I do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Running down that ramp, um, running those cases in. I told him that, you know, it's a tough job. It's a physically demanding job. But I also told him, you know, the type of money that we're making over here. And I said, it's one of the best investments that you can make if you just want to, you know, take a few weeks to learn a skill, to get that CDL, and to be able to make seventy to $100,000 your first year. It's, it's possible. Um got a lot of drivers that watch the channel that can attest to that so the possibility is there you're definitely gonna make <laughs> probably two or three times the amount of money that you're making doing what you're doing at the restaurant and he was uh kind of expressing 
how he was just tired of doing what he doing. He said, man, this right here ain't cutting it. That's exactly what he said. He said, man, this ain't cutting it. So, you know, especially now, man, in today's economy, man, you got to... You really got to do your best to try to be making as much money as you can. And that's something else that I try to emphasize on my channel. Whether you uh, got a side hustle, whether you get money uh, through passive income, some other type of way, maybe you're a content creator and you're able to monetize your channel if you're doing YouTube or some other social media platforms, there's, you know, a few different platforms where you can actually make money from. But um, Uber, Uber Eats, like whatever, man, you know, drop shipping, affiliate marketing, something. Shout out to my guy, Travel Trucker. Travel Trucker, I like what he's doing over there, man, because he's showing... He's showing you how to get money outside of trucking. You know, he got a pressure washing business. He got, you know, some other business endeavors that he um, operate. And I love seeing that side, man. Just people doing other things outside of trucking, making money, because that's what it's going to take in today's economy. It's a lot of people struggling right now, man. You know, I made a video recently where I was talking about retirees coming out of retirement having to go back into the workforce because the social security that they're getting is just not enough to take care of their monthly expenses and the cost of living has increased goods and services you know i mean you guys just just watch the news do do your research you know, the, the crazy thing is the trucking industry isn't the only industry that's struggling. Um, the retail industry. They're struggling in that space, too. You know, I was reading an article a couple days ago where um, some of your household name retail stores are closing a lot of stores due to the economy and also due to port management. And, you know, you got a lot of stores that's just underperforming. But you got stores like Walgreens. Uh, I think I seen it was like 600 plus stores that were closing. Um, Rite Aid, Foot Locker was on there. Express was on there. I don't know if you guys shop at Express in the mall. Uh, 7-Elevens was on there. I think it um, Bath and Body Works or something like that. It was it was a bunch of a bunch of retail stores closing. And, you know, that's jobs. <laughs> that's jobs. So you have a lot of people out of work when those closures take place. So, you know, um, if you've never been unemployed before, it's a blessing. <laughs> if you haven't, I've been there. So I know how it feels to be unemployed. Um, you know, and I was at a job for 15 years. Luckily, I was able to get a severance package. Some people lose their jobs and and aren't able to get anything which is really unfortunate um but you know it doesn't matter anytime you go through a, a unemployment type of situation it's it's no fun you know um you're trying to figure out what your next move gonna be you still got bills coming in all of that type of stuff so you know it can get stressful and you know it's just one of those things man to where you really trying to figure it out and it's just a it's just a position that you really don't never want to find yourself in but the reality is that anybody could go through a situation like that that's why you know me personally from somebody that's done experienced that uh, I definitely wouldn't wish it on nobody and you know I try to remain humble with the blessings that that I do have and everything that I have, all of that, man, because you could be up one day and it, it could all be gone the next day. So, you know, you really can't, um, you really can't take any of this for granted, man. You know, if you're in a good position right now, just um, 
thank the good Lord that you're there. Count your blessings because there are some people out there that aren't as fortunate enough to be in your position, at least not right now. So um, don't take anything that you got for granted, man. If you got a good job right now, count your blessings. Um, if you got good health right now, count your blessings. If your, your family okay, if your kids okay, if you have kids, if you got money in the bank, if you got a roof over your head, if you got transportation, you know, if you're able to put food on the table, like all of those things, man, it's, it's easy for us to take those things for granted. But a lot of people don't have those things. So you just got to be be grateful, man. You just got to be grateful. I think a lot of us, um, we get so focused and... Um, just always concentrating on the next thing and a lot of times we lose sight on what we do have because we always thinking about what we want and how can we do better right but sometimes man we just got to take a step back and just appreciate what we do have we may not have everything we want but we got a lot more than a lot of people and so, you know, when you think about it and you put things into perspective, it just really um, just really makes you appreciate what you do have a lot more, in my opinion. So appreciate all you guys for rocking with me and supporting the channel. I probably will drop another video sometime this week. And until the next video, I'll catch you guys later, man. Peace.